If you're like me, you're trying to find ways to stay warm in your RV for the winter, and you're looking for ways to improve insulation. You can use curtains, but really your glass is something that you want to get completely covered because of the heat loss that happens through it. So what I've got is I've got a video where I'm going to show you how to make these hyper insulated window inserts. They're completely tailored to each window. They're completely light blocking and they also are going to help reduce the condensation on your windows. They're very easy to make. If you can use a pair of scissors, you can make these. There's no sewing involved. Here are the layers that make up these inserts and you can see that there are a couple layers of Reflectix and we're also going to provide an air gap. So stay tuned and I'll show you step by step how to build these. Here are the five layers that make up the insert. At the core of it is the Coroplast or I call it corrugated vinyl and you can buy this at Lowe's or Home Depot. You might want to buy it in the 4x8 sheet if you have a lot of windows to do. It's located over in the glass cutting area at Lowe's. So this is going to serve as our backbone and it's got some flexibility and it's lightweight and easy to cut. This is also going to serve as our air gap, which I'll get to in a minute. Most people are familiar with Reflectix. We're going to use two layers of it and I'm going to go over the best way that the manufacturer recommends to increase our value with the Reflectix. The other interesting piece is the fabric that I'm going to use. And this is a unique fabric. It's kind of hard to see, but on one side it is vinyl. And what they've done is they have heat treated on the other side of it, a polyester fabric that is a nice smooth matte finish. And when it's in your window, it looks exactly like dark tinted windows. This is waterproof. Here is a picture of the barcode. You can take this to Walmart and they can look up that barcode. Um, it's not with the regular fabrics. It's with the outdoor fabrics and the sheet vinyl kind of off a little bit to the side of the regular ones. Um, but it, it is one that they're carrying and still continue to carry and it works great. You can cut it. You don't have to hem it because it doesn't fray. Now when you buy Reflectix, you get this label and there's a lot of great information on this label. Reflectix has a different R value depending on how you use it, but there's some interesting specs here. So on the technical data, the things that I found interesting was that there's no linear shrinkage. If you use it as infrared reflectic, reflection, it will reflect 94% of the light. It has a .02 water vapor transmission, so pretty waterproof. It's puncture resistant and there is no growth for mold and mildew and it passed a hot surface performance test at 250 degrees even though they only rate it for 180. Now down here they list, list different R values and I tried to find the lowest R value that it could be and what I found was basically if you put it on a metal garage door one layer exposed you're going to get an R3. Now there are ways to dramatically increase your R value. Now I'm not going to say that you're going to get anywhere near an R21, but where Reflectix comes into its own is when you provide it an air gap. In this in picture here, they've used two layers of Reflectix with some large air gaps in an enclosed space and they were able to get an R21. In this picture here, they've used um, a heat source above it and then an air gap, a layer, an air gap and another layer. So the key is air gaps. Even though our air gap is going to be small, so in the product that we're going to make today, you can see our air gap, which we're going to completely seal this edge. I don't know what the R value is, but I do know that I've used this in the heat of summer. Even though it's black and the sun hits the glass, there is so much insulation that even in the hot, hot summer of a South Carolina coastal summer, I felt no heat. It felt cool on this side. Now these are really quite easy to make. They do take some time to make and the more time you spend and the more patience you take, the better these are going to turn out to the point that they'll even be airtight and when you push them into the window, you'll hear the air rushing out and it makes suction. They can be so tight. So what you'll need is a pair of scissors, a nice sharp um, razor blade knife, tape measure, now this is important. We're going to use some duct tape, but there's a specific duct tape I like to use. This is the 3M duct tape and I'm, I use black and white. 
but I don't like the duck brand. I don't, don't, don't even get anywhere near the Walmart brand. It's garbage. But I like this tape here. I got it at Lowe's. I've used it for many projects. And after this sits on it for a while, it really bonds up. It's also going to be an intermediary material for when we do some gluing to make sure the glue stays stuck. As far as the glue, if you can get the high temp glue sticks, those are going to be best. Do not use the low temp. Those let loose at about 130 degrees. Um, I have used, these are all temperature Gorilla ones and they'll work. I don't know what temperature they're rated for, but they're supposed to work in high temperature situations. And I do know when I get it on me, it's very hot, a lot hotter and, and it will burn you versus the low temp. You need a fine point pen and a bit of cardboard, a metal straight edge for cutting the edges and a piece of paper to write down some measurements. Now the only template we're going to make is this. And the purpose of this is simply we're going to use it over and over again. And this is going to allow us to draw out our corner radius. And this is simple to make. So just get a regular piece of cardboard and cut you a raw shape like this. Our finished piece will look something like this. Because we need to reach in and draw this line here. So cut a piece of cardboard that looks like this. Get you a good length here and a good length here because we need to keep track of where it straightens out. All right, so I want to get a line showing this curve right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this here and take my hand, cover it tightly like this. Make sure it overlaps on the edges. Then I'm gonna take my pen and from behind, I'm going to mark that line and just follow the edge. All right, as you can see here, it kind of took me a couple tries to get it. Um, and you may have some little gaps you might have to draw in. Now, if you can't reach behind there to get the line in there, one thing you can do is you can put a crease on it. You can just um, push real hard like this all the way around and you can crease it and then you can cut that out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut out this line and cut right on the line and try to be very accurate. All right, so here's my first attack at it and just kind of get it in there and fit it in there. And as you can see, you really want this to be as perfect as possible. You can see right where my thumb is, that's a little high there. So it's not sitting directly in there. So I'm gonna take some time and just do a little bit of trimming and just cut it down to where everything fits exactly. All right, it took some work and I wasn't able to get the first one the way I wanted it. So just grab another piece of cardboard. And there you can see, fits really nice around there. And so if we can get this right, if you spend the time and patience on this, if you can get it just right, this is where you're going to get some really great light blocking and air tightness out of this. All right, this is the window that I'm going to make the insert for. And so what you want to do is do very accurate measurements with your tape measure. Go about in the middle of the window, push up on that tape so that the little metal piece closes, and then go down to the eighth of an inch. So on this one here, I'm looking at 24 and a quarter and about a sixteenth so that width and this i'll get my length and my width and write that down double triple check that measurement you don't want to get all the way through the process well we're going to we're going to go we're going to do a lot of checks along the way so that you'll be able to fix any errors you make so here i've used the same tape measure and i measured out my width and i made several tick marks all the way up then I took my metal straight edge, lined up my tick marks, and drew my line. Now one nice thing about when you draw the top line, or one of your lines, is you'll get to follow the corrugation so you'll know that you're drawing a straight line. Now which way to run the lines? Since this is a tall window, I like to have the flexibility in this direction so I can push it in the middle and it just kind of pops in. So right now my corrugation lines are running this direction from left to right. If you're gonna do a wide window, a real wide long window, then you might want to run the lines up and down, but this may depend on your material. So if you're like me and you don't have a workshop and you have to do this on your living room floor, get you a piece of wood and put it underneath your cut so you can save your carpet. Make sure you have it lined up just right. Take your metal straight edge Put it right on the line. In this case, we want to cut, cut directly on the line. I'm going to take my knife. I do a little bit of an angle here, just a little bit of an angle so I don't stray off. 
and you got to kind of bear down on it to get all, all get through both layers. But if you don't, you can use scissors to finish up that second layer. And so we cut it right here. So now I'm just going to cut the long one. So this is where our template comes into play. So you're going to line up the flat edges very carefully. Make sure your flat edges line up just perfectly. And then take your pen and trace those edges. So there you have a perfect edge. So I'm going to do all four of those.